to it, mm, we can get it to it. Body fluids on the floor, get it to it like a hood. Mm, we can get it to it, mm, we can get it to it. Body fluids on the floor, get it to it like a hood. Mm. What's the motion? Swing a right finger with a left, going straight, take the heart out his chest. Mm. Nut buck in the club, home girls lose the heel sand. Fuck my new curls and fuck them bum bitches. They talk like they hands on my Tyson. It's killed if you kill when I'm fighting. My sister's not watching, they jumping like double dutch. Fate like transition, cause violence is giving. Soft bitches is tripping. We don't do this a lot, so this is like a really huge deal. We want to invite you to have lunch with us every day for the rest of the week. Oh, it's okay. Coolness. So we'll see you tomorrow. On Wednesdays, we wear pink. Oh my god. Okay, you have to do it, okay? And then you have to tell me all of the horrible things that Regina says. Regina seems sweet. Regina George is not sweet. She's a scum sucking road horse. She ruined my life. She's fabulous, but she's evil. Hey, get out of here. Oh my god, Danny DeVito, I love your work. Why do you hate her? What do you mean? Regina, you seem to really hate her. Yes. What's your question? Well, my question is, why? Regina started this rumor that Jenna's- Damien! Yeah. Shall we not? Now, look, this isn't about hating her, okay? I just think that it would be like a fun little experiment if you were to hang out with them and then tell us everything that they say. What do we even talk about? Hair products. Ashton Kutcher. Is that a band? Would you just do it, please? Those bitches. Will this minimize my pores? No. Caddy, you gotta steal that book. No way! Oh, come on, we could publish it and then everybody would see what an axe wound she really is! I don't steal. <sighs> Katie, I hope you do join Mathletes, you know, because uh, we start in a couple weeks and I would love to have a girl on the team, just, you know, so the team could meet a girl. I think I'm gonna do it. Great. You can't join Mathletes, it's social suicide. Thanks, Damien. <laughs> well, this has been sufficiently awkward, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Oh, man, that is bleak. Look, she's not gonna get away with this again, okay? We're gonna do something. Regina George is an evil dictator. Now, how do you overthrow a dictator? You cut off her resources. Regina would be nothing without her high-status man candy, technically good physique, an ignorant band of loyal followers. Now, Caddy, if we want this to work, you are gonna have to keep hanging out with them like nothing is wrong. No, we just have to regroup. Think outside our box. What are Caltein bars? They're these weird Swedish nutrition bars. My mom used to give them to the kids in Africa to help them gain weight. They're these weird nutrition bars my mom used to lose weight. She's not even that good looking if you really look at her. I don't know. Now that she's getting fatter, she's got pretty big jugs. Hey, okay, I'm having an art show, so. You should take a night off from your double life. I want you to see it. Golness. What is that smell? Oh, Regina gave me some perfume. You smell like a baby prostitute. Thanks. Hey, I called you last night. How come you didn't call me back? Oh, I got busy, sorry. So you need a ride to my art show this weekend? Oh, no, I have to go to Madison with my parents. I'm so sorry. Well, you want to watch a movie tonight? Can't. I'm doing major plastic sabotage tonight. But we don't have anything planned for tonight. Oh, I planned this one on my own. Love ya, bye. That's where you're going, fat ass. <laughs> Dirty little liar. I'm sorry, I can explain. Oh, explain how you forgot to invite us to your party? Janice, I cannot stop this car. I have a curfew. You know I couldn't invite you. I had to pretend to be plastic. 
buddy, you're not pretending anymore. You're plastic. Cold, shiny, hard plastic. Curfew, 1 a.m. and it's now 1.10. Did you have an awesome time? Did you drink awesome shooters and listen to awesome music and then just sit around and soak up each other's awesomeness? You know what? You're the one who made me like this so you could use me for your eighth grade revenge. God, see, at least me and Regina George know we're mean. You try to act like you're so innocent. Like, oh, I used to live in Africa with all the little birdies and the little monkeys. You know what? It's not my fault you're, like, in love with me or something. What? Oh, no, she did not. See, that is the thing with you plastics. You think that everybody is in love with you when actually everybody hates you. Welcome to Dudes Brewing. What's up, what's up, what's up? What up, what up, guys? We're back. It's your boy, Kels. And Benda. You know what time it is. We back with the shabam, bam, all right? Welcome, welcome, welcome. And here with some new things, some new things, guys. We want to thank you guys again for tuning in. Uh, it's, it hasn't been often I've been able to uh, remind uh, our, our, me and Benda yeah. or ourselves we just really appreciate you guys and your support oh yes yes um you know for supporting our channel and stuff so it's you know, we're a new channel so we're kind of like remembering all these check marks and book book things to do to make sure that we know that let you guys know that we appreciate you for for tuning in yes yeah so we got some new 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 for you some new information some some new topics yeah today is uh we like uh kels are saying uh we're talking about some some Toxic, some toxic things. Yeah, you've, some toxic things, guys. You've heard of toxic masculinity? Yes, yes, you've heard of that. Yes, yes. And then today, we'll be talking about toxic femininity. Exactly, exactly. And what we mean by toxic femininity is that, um, how would you guys, let's ask the audience, how would you define what toxic masculinity is? Mm. Yeah, the, 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 the topics were, simply put, women need men to survive. Men need women to create, to, to, to propagate a society. We established why women need men to survive. We already established that. We're not going to continue on with yeah, that. We don't have to, but that's not true. That's why. A few moments later. Continue. And guess what he said? We're oh, not yeah, going to continue. It, it's not. That was his not, problem. Yeah. That was his choice not yeah, to continue. Yeah, there, was, there was no. no because you got with triggered, home. baby. What the, what the hell? What's going on in here? Oh, what I am this here. What's going on? What oh, the shit. heck? Oh, okay. Come. Come. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Don't do it, bro. What's up? Don't do it, man. Don't do it. Don't do it. Come on in, man. Come on in, then. Oh, you got a gun? Come on in, bro. I'm afraid of a gun, nigga. Okay, come Only on pussy in. Pussy niggas need a gun for a nigga that ain't Come on in, then. Come on in. Toxic masculinity is a term that was invented by women nobody wants to fuck <laughs> to describe the men that the women do want to fuck. It's Damn, jealousy. son, that, where'd you find that's this? That's all it is. That's all it is. No, but on, on a real level, right, this whole idea of being toxically masculine is complete garbage. And the reason it's garbage is because it's a first world problem first. Mm -hmm. Because when you put males and females in survival situations, or the closer they are to a survival situation, the quicker they're going to revert to their gender roles. If you put a whole bunch of men and a whole bunch of women, you strand them on a desert island, the men would start having to build things and fight off the animals, and the women would start farming and whatever the women would do, right? Exactly. Yeah? yeah? So when, 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 when shit hits the fan, everyone, go, everyone reverts to their natural gender roles. Mm -hmm. So if you live in a country like Romania or Russia or a country that's poor, the closer it is to survival, the lower the economic prosperity of the country the closer people are to their natural gender role so Very russian true. men are masculine russian females are feminine mm -hmm. but in america it's the richest country in the world it's a first world problem all the women get to be stupid and the men get to be pussies because it's just a first world problem this whole idea of being toxically masculine is absolutely garbage nobody's toxically listen you're not going to call me toxically masculine if someone breaks in the house and i start spraying no one's gonna start calling me toxically masculine no there was no one called toxically masculine when they were fucking staying on the titanic to die right the whole thing is garbage and it's just by women who are bitter and jealous trying to insult and demonize men for being natural to their instinct 
This, I, I don't. I don't want to rant too much. No, right? no, continue. I don't want to rant. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's continue go. Let's go. The world we live in today <laughs> tries very, very hard to refuse a man his natural instincts as a man. Yeah. And this is done on purpose. This is not done on accident. There's no war on men on accident. Men are the ones who start revolutions. If you look at any revolution in history, it was the men who were on the street and started that revolution. If you want to control a populace, the first thing you do is control the men. When you went, when the Romans went and conquered Sparta, they killed all the men, all the young boys, all the fighting age males. When you're left with nothing but females, you can conquer and control a society. We're living in a world right now where there's supposedly some virus and you have to stay in your house and put a mask on, and everyone's complying like cowards. And the reason is, is because they've destroyed the masculine spirit in men. If you would have told men 100 years ago, we're going to take your business away, we're going to bankrupt you, and they're going to lock you in your house, every single man would have stood up and said, what? Who are you? You yep. ain't listening to us. The people who are in charge of the world want to control the population, and the easiest way to do that is to remove the warriors from the populace. Thanks. That's all it's about. So when men try and act in a masculine way, they're toxically masculine. Mm -hmm. They demonize us. And then another way they do is they try and shame us. Shame is another tactic. Because when we look up the word masculinity, by definition, it is only pointing out physical appearances. So it means if some a man is handsome, or um, he's uh, got a great muscly physique. Mm. So it's all about physical attributes. So the question goes, how can a man be toxically masculine? How can one be so physical that they abuse their, their physicality yeah. or their masculinity? And um, the only way we can see that is if someone like physically grabs someone or attacks someone. someone yeah. And takes advantage of their size and strength. And, and strength. Get each other up. Go, I see you are uh, you're a doggy, so. Oh, go. Oh, hey, David! Go. Come on! Good. You're go, boss of us. I don't listen, I'm just stay here. You're boss of us. You is women you just to come. little so bit irritating from my brain. Go, Doc. <laughs> no, it's a good man. I'm, I'm good here. I He's okay stay. for now on because you don't like women. You, you don't want to. Maybe you can go huh? with me and. Oh. Off. That's my team captain. You've said enough. Go. I'm yeah. good. I'm good. Go, go, go out, man. We're not fighting each other. Yeah, I can't fight you. It's hey, not don't, don't, don't touch my team. Hey, man, hey, man, no problem. Oh, okay. Don't touch you. I stay here. Hey, if you want to. Whatever. What the problem? I stay here. I don't yeah, say listen, no. Don't go like this, man. I am good. Who guys speak with this? Man, I'm there. It's, it's your girl who talk to me. Yeah, I don't talk to you. There's a large contingent of men out there who don't want to wear makeup who don't want to be girls, who don't want to be told they're toxic because they want to go to the gym, who want to drive nice cars, who want to have money, who want to have hot chicks. And there's nothing wrong with us. We are not evil. We are not bad. We're not misogynistic. We're not out to hurt anybody. Let me tell you one more thing. When bad things happen, they call men like us. The feminists who hate us and call us toxic, the second they have trouble, they'll call a police officer. Do you think they want a feminist male to turn up or a man like me and you? They need us and they use us. But the second we have an opinion, the second I decide to voice and talk about the things that we talk about, explain our point of view, they want to cancel us. They don't want us to speak. They just want us to defend them, build the railroads, build the roads, be the workhorses, be the slaves, and they think we're not a lot of point of view well they made a fucking mistake mm. so and if there's a opposite which there's always an opposite because there's an up and a down a left and a right if there's a toxic masculinity then there's a toxic femininity so what is toxic femininity you may ask if you if you like hate me if you hate my content if you hate my jokes whatever right you you're a terrible person you're probably a bigot that's honestly <laughs> what it is like I said in my video from yesterday, the ability for men to buy microphones and speak into them. And what? Broadcast their involuntary abstinence to the world. A curse. A curse put on this earth. <laughs> Who's to blame for this? <laughs> I want everyone in that room to take off their hats. Just for a second, I'm trying to, I'm trying to see something. And I also want y'all to line up and I want to see how tall everybody is. Just for my anthropological research, you feel me? Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> Symbiotic. If you don't exist, neither do I. So if you stop, I'll have to. But me thinks you're not gonna do that. Y'all can't fucking help yourselves. So if you can't take these jokes, how about you take these nuts, bitch? <laughs> But I think a lot of times you go to college, you become more educated and more empathetic towards other people. Dude. <laughs> what? What did I say about podcasts? 
ban all men from being able to buy microphones, dude. <laughs> An infestation of dudes. Come on, bro. <laughs> you built like every Tim Burton character fucking ever. <laughs> Your hairline's so far back, it looks like you put that you can never reason with bitches like this. They have no interest in changing or having an educational conversation. They just want to keep balding and being fucking short. That's why I tell them to eat shit. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> part of your growth is challenging the things that you love and feel now. Cause like, I think part of my pick me phase too was the way I used to dress. I used to never wear things that were too baggy, too boxy. I didn't like to wear things that um, would hide my figure because I felt like it made me look a certain way, which is also tied to fat phobia, but that's tied to misogyny too. They're very intertwined. Huh? 19 right so you should have done like basic schooling God. words are hard though brother i feel you <laughs> do what you gotta do i just wouldn't make fun of fat people at the same time you know what i mean those two things can't coexist bitch <laughs> and last but certainly not least you look like nick from big mouth <laughs> oh bye <laughs> bro <laughs> embarrassing part about this video to me you were sucking your lips in the whole time when you push them out they look the fucking same no lips no opinion arthur christmas head ass <laughs> you're gonna like how i do it <laughs> most of them don't but i mean r.i.p in advance videos like this where men say this shit women are so fucking emotional <laughs> That's nasty. That's nasty. So I would say toxic femininity from what me and Binda researched and we found out is yeah. femininity is about same thing, physical features. And um, it's about looks and beauty and physicality. Now that is unfortunately more common to be abused. And yeah. that's, um, and in general that can be related to Instagram where there's someone's thirst trapping using thirst trapping photos dating sites to attract men or, or dating sites you know or uh, say for someone that's at the bar and they just want to abuse their like looks and just try to get a drink out of a guy and maybe persuade him of the idea that something could happen the fuck? <laughs> So interesting question of course. that we want to ask the audience, trying to get my words out. <laughs> but um, and a way that that femininity can be abused, that can be abused through maybe going to nightclubs and abusing that femininity to get a drink, you know, and your physicality. And you're trying to convince a man that you're interested, but you're not actually you're actually just trying to solicit and get something free out of him. <laughs> Hi. I noticed your glass was getting a little low, so I took the liberty of bringing you another apple martini. Thank you. Um, another way toxic femininity can be done is by abusing uh, Instagram and thirst trap photos or um, being in the gym and trying to get followers on TikTok and making these videos, making men uh, look at you while you're at the gym, abusing your beauty and your and your curvaceousness, and then using that to purport that you're a victim and that there are um, they're well, shaming they're, shaming men. Yeah, yeah, using it to shame men about men's attraction to physical appearance. All men are physical, like in general, men are we're, we're physical in nature, you know, um, and that comes down to um, sexuality and sexual uh, aspects of life, like. Men, we, we have more testosterone, so we care for more physical activity in general. Uh, we have 10 times the te te uh, testosterone than women. And you even find this, once again, I've said this previously before, you find this with uh, your gay mates. I know I heard Gucci pump pom time. Hey, dude, don't get the wrong idea. Oh, <laughs> at the wrong, you get the wrong idea. That is why he's no longer welcome in the state of Missouri. Buddy, you pranced into the wrong cabin. My friend and I, <laughs> we're not gay. <laughs> ring, ring. Hold the phone. What you telling me? You two guys are not gay. That's right. 
<laughs> Come on, pull Hector's other leg. He's got bells on it. I'm getting out of here. She? What hasn't gotten into him? Out? You'll find gay mates that are as, as physical as like straight mates are when it comes to conquest. Oh, here he comes. Watch out, boy, he'll chew you up. Oh, here he comes. He's a man eater. Oh, here he comes. Watch out, boy, he'll chew you up. Oh, here he comes. He's a man eater. I wouldn't if I were you. Okay, and back to our number two. What's the most unusual place that you ever made love? Well, once I did it in the dressing room at International Mail. Right, and uh, how about you, bachelor number three? What's the most unusual place that you ever made love? Inside a woman. <laughs> An intimacy of, of those sorts, if you live in a Western world and that's a common thing. Hmm. So, um, so toxic femininity is a big, big, issue at the moment because we've seen these gym videos these tiktok <laughs> videos that have gone viral, viral yeah. and um a lot of people speaking out about yeah. it a lot um i think it's because it's a shared space that's the other thing I, um, I can't remember who was talking about this but it was a gentleman he speaks out about it yeah you have to remember a it's a shared space b everyone's just trying to work out most of the time <clears throat> to have this i think it's very narcissistic to believe that Every guy in the gym is staring at you. Yeah. Um, the fact that you, you see some of these videos, someone's just grabbing a plate. Yeah. And then you then and go. And, and they're being chivalrous. Yeah. They're being chivalrous. And then, well, you know, because... and that, that's what we're supposed to do, right? We're supposed to be gentlemen or, you know, in a traditional sense that a lot of ladies say they want. So... And, and, and like, like, yeah, you're trying to be a gentleman or they just, it's gym etiquette. Yeah. You don't yeah. go around just taking people's things. Of course, you've got to walk up to them and talk to them. Yeah. You're going to be, hey, uh, are you using this? Um, how many sets have you got left? Yeah. And if you think that someone hitting on you, join an all-women's gym. Yeah. Go exactly. work out at home. And you know, that's the funny thing. They say, <laughs> they were saying if they started um, having um, gender-separated gyms, it's like a lot of ladies would stop working out. Oh, hell yeah. Because part of... Ladies, you know this. Don't deny it. As a lot of ladies love attention. A hundred percent. They love attention. And to purport that you don't like attention is completely asinine. You know, if you didn't like attention, you wouldn't wear what you wear to go out to a nightclub, you know. And, of course, you might want to fit in with ladies socially and try to one-up your friends or your female mates attire-wise. But you go out to be seen. You just stay, seen. At, you just stay you at home. Go, you go out to be seen. Yeah. That's the term going out going out means you want people to look, look at, at you. you it's a public area yeah if you're like i'm going out to the club you have a boyfriend you have a husband whatever it may be you're like, no no you stay home i'm going out to the club for girls night and you see her getting all dolled up top to bottom in one of those outfits like maybe when she was trying to get you right when she was trying to get you she was wearing those outfits but now she already has you hmm She's wearing them again. What's going on there? Why do you do that, women? How do you not sense that that's going to make a guy uncomfortable? Because you know in his mind, it's like, well, who's she dressing up for? I'm, I'm home. Right? We're getting all dolled up. She doesn't dress like that around the house, so it's not like she's doing it for herself. I've seen her hang out with her girlfriends in her pajamas. Where's she going to the club looking like a stripper? Trying to maybe feel out the room, maybe got one foot out the door. Maybe she's looking for something at that club. And if it strikes her interest, maybe a little flirting happens while you're not there. That's where the guy's mind goes. And I don't blame them for that. So anyways, my buddy's having fun with her. They get drunk. He each says, hey, can I stay the night here? I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure. You know, at this point, I'm like, okay, what's this girl's attention? As the night progresses, well, she wasn't engaged anymore and whatever happened. I fall asleep and I wake up to this phone call. She tells me to be quiet. It's her fiance calling from Minneapolis uh, saying he couldn't get a hold of her all night. And she's like, honey, I went to bed at 1030 after the show. Where have you been? I've been worried sick. And then she starts giving him shit for going to strippers, accusing him of cheating. And I'm like, what the hell was that? So she gets a call in the morning from her boyfriend and she turns the table or tables around and accuses him of the very thing that she was doing. Absolutely. I always tell you guys, when somebody points the finger at you, they've got three fingers pointing back at themselves, okay? Question that, always.
I want to go on Girls Night Out translation. I want to dress provocatively, go outside, field my options while you sit at home like a dummy and not know that I'm still playing the field while you're faithful to me. So it's like to purport that you go out outside and you just no, put on this makeup and high heels for yourself. For yourself is is BS at the end of the day. And I've had there was a lady. I wish I remembered some of them. She even spoke. No, tell, she's, tell she, us, tell us. she was honest. She was like, "You think I go out clubbing just for myself?" Yeah. She's like, "You think I go through all this effort so I can go out clubbing so no one can look at me?" <laughs> she was like, "I'm honest. I do go out clubbing because I want guys to yeah. see see this to yeah. talk to me." Yeah. She goes. I'm sorry, any any lady, she said any ladies out there being like, oh, yeah, do it for myself. You can literally do that at home. Yeah. If you want to do it for yourself, dress up at home, don't yeah. go out. Yeah. Most most people have speakers, yeah. you have a TV, play some music, dance with your friends. Yeah. There you go. You won't have any gazes, no one trying to chat you up. But attention is crucial. They love it. Yeah. It's, don't, and don't lie that you don't like, everyone loves attention. Yeah, attention, attention for ladies. Guys who don't know this, I'm going to tell you a secret. Um, and whether ladies find this toxic that I'm telling secrets, the secret is, is it's a very true statement is that attention is a, a currency for women as much as men view sex, sex yeah. as a currency for us or whatever. So um, ladies don't necessarily need to sleep with you. They can get satisfied off the fact that you replied to her message yeah. on or Bumble like or Tinder or send a like on her photo or followed her Instagram link that mm -hmm. she put in her her Bum bio. bio. Yeah. Or even more, even worse, if you're an unfortunate dude that's sitting there and you're going on people's OnlyFans Fans, yeah. and you're you're paying for that crap, then you also you know you're you know you're a, a, a giving her stimulation of the fact that not even just with the currency on top of that just for the fact that you've decided to go give her that attention yeah. so attention is currency you know and unfortunately you know they kind of liken uh disciplining people in a, in a relationship and when i say disciplining people i mean by if someone is rude to you they almost you almost have to treat um people almost like a child and pull attention away from from them in order to tell them, like, no, I'm going to ignore the screaming child on the ground, swinging their arms. And you have to treat, unfortunately, children like that. And sometimes some ladies can be a bit childish. They can be infantile and in how they go about their way of wanting things done. And they can, you know, try to abuse their power for attention. Why do women lie? Why do they lie? Why can't you just say, like, I like to get the, te the attention? I'm going out, I'm doing it for attention. Well, why? Because she may have a boyfriend. And if she says that and acknowledges that it's not about her man, but it's about attention from other men, that guy's going to be out the door, right? He's going to be done with you. So that's why they lie. They lie because they want to have their cake and eat it too. When people ask me the question, oh, Rolo, my girlfriend asked me if she could go on a girl's night out or she could go to a Vegas weekend and blah, blah, blah. And she, uh, what should I say? And I said, I tell you, I'd say this. I say, you let her go. I say, yeah, good. Have a good time. And then when she comes back, all her shit's out on the sidewalk and her, the locks are changed and she's out on her ass because you don't talk about boundaries. You enforce boundaries. And, you know, so that's what we mean by toxic femininity is abusing your 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 um, physicality for attention. attention 100%. And you're tricking men on, on top of that to think and purport that you're actually interested in them when you have no real intentions with this person. It's like it's like ladies that go out on a date with a dude. And they have zero oh, intentions no, no, of sleeping with a guy. Or well, seeing him. Ladies also. will waste your time. Yeah. And ladies, you know this. <laughs> you will waste a dude's time and you'll go out for a meal, for a coffee. And you know you have no desire to sleep with this dude. Look, Kevin Samuels is very famous for saying something very true. He said, look, if you don't like this harsh reality, I'm going to say it to you. If you don't want to have a sex, if you don't want to have sex with a man, don't go out on a date with him. All men want sex from you. We do. We do. And if you don't want to have sex with the dude, do not go on a date with him and waste his time. That's not what we value, ma'am. We want a beautiful woman on our arm. 
Yeah, and, that's the problem. Well, no, you're the problem. I'm the because, problem. Yes, you're the problem because I'm telling you what men want. You've experienced what men want and you've got a problem with it. That's your problem. We're not going to change. You're either going to get on board with it or you will die alone. So what should I be looking for then? Well, honestly, first you need to get down and understand that you have no leverage. You have no leverage in this matter. It's the men. We control access to relationships. You control access to sex. You need to understand what a man that you would want, what he would want in a girlfriend, wife, or significant other. So we do have expectations. I think. I of think things. for me, it's more like if you have no expectation of just having anything with him, whether it's sex, whether it's relationship, you shouldn't. Yeah. If you, your I, I, idea ideology is just like, yeah, ah, yeah, you, you're not obligated to sleep with. Yeah, the you guy, don't have to sleep with the but guy. No, but know that but, men, but, you, but women, men, honestly, we do want sex. So if you don't point, have a Oh, and you go out on a date with a chick, you want to smash her. Don't lie. Of course, of course every guy wants a, like, uh, realistically, every guy would love to you wouldn't, straight you wouldn't, away. You wouldn't go on a date with her if you didn't want to smash her. But I mean, like... Um, and I'm sorry, I don't want to use the term smash, <laughs> but it's like mashed potatoes. It just is what it is, you know? Uh, what I'm trying to say is... Smash potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, it doesn't matter whether... Because every, every, every guy is different, I believe. Yeah. And... I don't go on a date and go. I just want to have sex. I'm sorry, but like, I'm, of course, but look, look, of course, you don't preface it. Yeah, that. But way. I'm what I'm trying to say is, if you're going on a date, <laughs> you're not, but, and you and and, and but, but just trying to be nice. No, nah, I'm I'm not trying to be nice. I'm just yeah. <laughs> being honest. If you're going on a date as a as a woman and you're you have actual no idea whether it's sex, whether it's relationship, whatever, it's anything. We're telling you if you don't have no, you idea. you have no atten intention of anything because yeah. I think people get confused and be like, oh, so. It's just sex, is it? Well, no. Because some guys... Obviously... Eventually, there's going to be sex, but I'm no, saying... No, no, no. I mean... Cappuccino. Nigga. Like... Yes, it, it's not just sex, but men want sex. Men do want sex, but I'm saying, yes, like... we're physical. Men are physical, but I'm saying, if you go into a date and you have no intention of anything, then that's an issue. Because, like... I think it, I yeah. I believe if you go if you tell any girl out there yeah men want sex they'll they'll, they'll just they're like whoa I don't feel like just having sex I want a more cool, more cool, connection cool they might not feel like doing that yeah. or whatever yeah. but like if you want more connection that's the part where I was going to go into is mm. to tell them you have to be able to show what you are worth and what you're bringing to the table to actually get more connection out of that guy yeah yeah i agree with that 100 you know, percent. you're going to this date you might want that connection but you also need to show why you're worth him connecting to it even more yeah. you you do woman control you do control access to sex, sex yeah you do 100 but we control access to relationships and if you want that stronger connection with the guy you have to do things that is above the ordinary women don't want to submit uh, they don't want to surrender. They don't want to make a sandwich, let alone cook a freaking pasta like dish. A real they meal. don't want to clean. They don't want to, women, even when they have children today, women are, and I am hating on these women. I'm sorry. The best thing for your child is to have your child vaginally. Yeah. Women are scheduling cesareans. Mm -hmm. They are not breastfeeding their children. I breast my, fed my son until he was seven. I have encountered many women in my life, many, who have said, I don't really like this guy. And I'll say, why are you going out with him? Well, you know, free meal. <laughs> or, you know, it's dinner or whatever. I'll just won't talk to him afterward. I'm hungry. <laughs> Happens all the time. Happens all the time, which is why I tell guys, do not spend money on that first date. Don't spend it. Don't spend it. I would never advise a guy to spend a lot of money on a first date. And here's why. Women like this are prevalent. They're everywhere. And they're out to get you. Women divorce men 70 to 80 percent of the time. I, I would argue in relationships it's probably similar. Men aren't leaving, women are. So to a guy's point of view, he's going to commit to this girl. And what does he get? He doesn't get purity anymore. He doesn't He doesn't get youth anymore, so he doesn't get either of those things. A lot of times she already has a kid, so he, he's not fulfilling his mating strategy. On top of that, even if he does find a good woman that maybe has the qualities he's looking for, he, she was going to want him to marry her, right? 
And what does he get out of that? Oh, she can leave and take half and take my kids. And she's paid to take my kids away from me. She gets more money if she takes my children. And so from the men's point of view, they're just kind of like, F it, because women aren't wives nowadays. And what do they get out of it? Men are logical. They're logical people. And so they're, they're thinking, does the benefit outweigh the cost? I just think as women, we have to look at ourselves and say, the benefits we bring nowadays don't outweigh the cost for most men. Which is something that a lot of women won't do nowadays. They feel subjugated if they try to show that they're willing to do more to keep that guy's attention and, and retention. We have a burden of performance. That's why you chose us. Hmm. To, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut no, you. No, 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 I have, agree. We have a burden of performance where we have to show what we bring to the table yeah, for yeah. you to even take us out on a date. date. Yeah, exactly. So if we decided to, and we, we, you picked us to go out on that date and that we are, are of value, and we, we build ourselves a value so we can have more intimacy, intimacy selections yeah. with sexual activity, whether you guys don't know that or not, that's why men try to build themselves so that we can even have opportunity to have that. You guys don't have to do anything. You can get someone to sleep with you. Yeah, yeah. But we actually have to build ourselves up. So if we have to do that, there's a burden of performance for you. So if you want that access to the relationship, you need to show what you can bring to the table. So it's less about your list of requirements on dating apps that you might have gotten hubris about and ego about because you get free attention on social media and dating apps, hmm. you still need to show what you provide if you want that connection. And I'm sorry, that's a truth that is missing from a lot of women that they're not telling you. Even some women on these podcasts are not telling you, you need to show what you can bring to the table. They'll purport for, it. For beyond a sexual thing. Like yeah, what yeah, can you bring yeah, to the yeah, table yeah, other beyond, than... Beyond, beyond, the, beyond the intimacy. Because yeah. the intimacy, is, it's a component of it yeah. that, that obviously men want to want, be desire. Yeah. But if you want like relations, long-term, long-term term, term, yeah. investment, where we take the brunt of the... Um, uh, of consequences if that relationship fails. Behind every defeated man, you'll find a woman who ruined his life. This is something I tweeted this week. Pat, how could you say this? I mean, this isn't fair. Isn't the opposite true as well? What if a woman that also marries the wrong man? Absolutely. However, the American system protects the woman and there's a greater risk for a man to get married than a woman to get married and that's just the truth in america western society defends women so if a man is married to a woman you're financially tied where you have to take care of that person if you don't have an optional agreement in place which means in america the man has to be careful who to marry because she can totally ruin your life if you marry the wrong person if you see men as the enemy good luck finding a high value man simple as that you cannot see men as the enemy. Why do I say this? A lot of times mothers who went through a divorce and maybe married a man who didn't treat them well, they indirectly put that mindset into their daughters. Their daughters at six years old, seven years old, 10 years old, 15 years old have heard how many times that mom has talked smack about the dad. Eventually the daughter becomes a 22 year old woman who sees men as the enemy. If you see them as enemy, good luck finding a high value man. That's not only just with uh, dating, but that's also with marriage as well in the Western world. If a relationship goes wrong, we have to deal with the rep reputational repercussions of, is something wrong with that guy? Because he was with this girl for like two years and now like she left. About your personal life, I'll be honest, I don't know, right? But I'll tell you this now, if this dude, this NBA player, believed that he would be higher respected amongst his peers and amongst society for taking care of you properly, that's what he'd fucking do. He doesn't feel that because either he's rolling with the wrong people or you've pissed him off in a way, or something public's happened, I don't have a clue. But something's happened where he feels like, if I take care of her, I'll look like a bitch. That's what he's scared of. If it was inversed, he had no problem giving you money. Because that's how men function. I'm telling you right now, as a man, I'm telling you what I would do. If I had a chick with a woman, right? And she went on the news, top cheese this, and fucking, I don't, and this, I, like I said, I have no idea what you've done, but I'm just giving my personal made-up scenario. Oh, yeah. she, she would go on the news, top cheese this, and he fucking lied to me, he's a piece of shit, da 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 and then I bought her a Bentley. Women's be like, well, look, she insults Top G. She insults him, and he's fucking, he's a simp. Da, da, da. But if she was like, you know what? He, he's misunderstood. He's a good guy. It just didn't work out. Boom, boom, boom. I bet she'd be in a mansion, right? And would that be, mm, you yeah. know? We, we always have the brunt of, of performance of what did he do? Yeah, what did he do? The responsibility in Western world always falls on men. In Eastern world, it doesn't. In the Eastern world, it falls on women because... If a woman is able to get a man, it's ideally her her value that needs to be able to retain that man. And that value does stem from the initial getting together. You have to have 
mutual values in a relationship. Yeah. But it's her job to actually truly retain the relationship. relationship. Yeah. If if she is bad with retention of keeping a man, it shows that it may be something wrong with her that she's selfish that she keeps losing that person, you know? Mm. Well, I always say to people who kind of suggest that the East is oppressed and stuff, I said, but measure life satisfaction. Who's happier? The girl that's got an OnlyFans or doing porn or the woman who's living in Kashmir, where I'm from, uh, with the kids and family and has a purpose. The girl who's doing OnlyFans, these men are not going to come to your funeral. No one's going to care. Whereas that woman who is looking after her children, she's got a legacy and there's nothing more beautiful than that. And you're telling me my culture is oppressive when I find your culture humiliating. And so that's where my kind of anti-feminism came from because I was just constantly being told that I'm oppressed when I could not feel more liberated when I don't post like that and I don't live that lifestyle. Men, we do provide the access to relationships. So overall, what I'm trying to say is if you really want that, you have to do more. Whatever. Well, yeah, oh, yeah. So, sorry, no, no, no. Bad with cutting you off. No, 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 no. I, I agree. With, um, that, with the that, sexual aspect with of the, dating you were talking. Yeah, about. Yeah, I 100 percent agree. It's, it's, it. You, what you said is perfect. If you're going on that, it is more than just showing up and being hot. Which, yeah, of, of course, guys like that. You can just show up and be hot. But yeah. if you're wanting more, you can't just show up and be hot because, yeah. as we know, there's a lot of hot people. Yeah. On the planet. Yeah. In fact. But, True. There is heaps of hot people. Yeah, you find true. them everywhere. Yeah, yeah, you can find beautiful people anywhere. Every, anywhere. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, some men that <laughs> that don't have much value to them, they kind of take what they can get, and yeah. be because of that, that might like conflate your 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 sense of worth as well too. When because you get free attention from dudes that just they want anything. Hey, yeah, they want. Well, they're any desperate for. Yeah, they want anything. Yeah. But if you find a real man of value that actually um, is selective with the things that he wants because he inv he's invested in himself to build himself up. Um, Benda Kells, you know, uh, we're we're doing our thing, you know, and our and you know, if we're doing that as men, hmm. then we will be more selective of what we would choose to date or yeah, have in our life, yeah, have in a long term, our, yeah, and have in our lives. Now, the reason why Andrew Tate could probably have several wives who all know about each other and are totally fine with the setup is because he has the three M's. What I mean by the three M's is money, masculinity, and muscles. Now, usually women have to compromise on one of the three ends. Now, if he's able to have all three of them, what happens is women replace their possessiveness with gratitude. So they're simply grateful that a man like of that status and in that standard is investing in them and they don't mind sharing that investment because a shared investment with a man on that level is better than a sole investment from a man that is average. When a woman meets a man like Andrew, she will replace her desire to control him with a desire to impress him. And how she impresses him is simply being as feminine and nurturing as possible. Women will replace control with cooperation because they know control is impossible with men at a certain level of status. You will not support a man. I will, however, gladly support a woman. There's a difference. I'm willing to take on that leadership role. You're claiming you want the leadership role, but you're not willing to do what's required. Not the leadership role. So then how can you ask for equality and have someone who's a leader? who has more responsibility than you, then at the same time demand equality. That's ridiculous. That's like me fighting in the military, saying, yo, uh, Lieutenant, I want all your same authority, but I'm equal to you. But we let women run around and say a bunch of bullshit, like, I'm equal to you too, but I expect you to have all the responsibility. That doesn't go that way. That's not the way the world works. Someone has to be the leader. Someone has to have the responsibility. Your own answer killed it all. I am not going to support a man. Fantastic. Nor should you. You're a woman. But a man is willing to support a woman. That's the difference. We're built for it. You're not. So you do need to show what you bring to the table. You can't just say, oh, I want to be in a relationship and I'm tired of time wasters. <laughs> if you're saying you're tired of time wasters, that means you're telling us you wasted your time before, which means that the red flag may be you. Men are more valuable as we get older. Every man, every woman knows that. Every woman will sit here and go, yeah, I want a man who's older than me. Of course. But if, we, if I say it the other way around, I'm misogynistic. It's just the reality of the world. So, so then we have to go into the other point. The point is this. When you were at your peak value, you had zero interest in monogamy. But then you find a man who's 35 at his peak value. He's finally struggled and worked because when he was 19, no girl spoke to him. When he was 23, he was broke. When he was 24, he had no life experience. When he was 25, he couldn't fuck. He finally gets to the point where he's now at his peak value. Him at 35 is you when you were 19. 
And then you're sitting there saying to him, no, you should be monogamous. Da, da. It's like, well, you fucking weren't. You did whatever you wanted in your peak. Now I'm finally got there. And I had to work for my shit. God and L'Oreal gave you you. I had to fucking struggle. I had to go through hell to get on this yacht. You got on the yacht with an Instagram DM. I had to buy it. And now you're telling me I need to fucking settle down and, and behave and grow up? Fuck well, you. I want someone that sees the value in the Grand Canyon. I want somebody who... I understand. Okay, like, so, so that's a good point. Why do you think zero women choose them when they're at the peak of their choices? When a woman is 19 and she can go anywhere she wants, every man wants her, she can go on any yacht in Miami, she can get flown out to Dubai, when she has all the choices in the world, why is she completely uninterested and those kind of men. And then once she gets to a certain age of maturity and all there's a whole new generation of girls who have all the choices, then they sit there and go, you know what? I deserve mon monogamy and da da, and they all of a sudden want to grow up and mature. Why, don't, does, why does no woman decide that when she actually is at her most valuable? I'm the icy man. She chunked the muck. She liked the fuck with suckers. Suck the fuck. I'm the icy man. What are, what's the value system or the point system for a woman who cooks versus a, a woman who can suck good dick and fuck well? Okay, I did a street interview and I asked the guys, would you rather have a girl that gave good head or a good cook? And most guys- They want this. Bullshit. What men are interested in, in life as a whole, is status. If I turn up home and I come home with my boys and she says, I'll cook you all a steak. That's status. If a woman comes up to me and goes, I'll be the best sex you ever had. I am fucking revolted. I don't want the best sex I've ever had. I want you to be pure and a virgin. You shouldn't know what sex is. Cook my fucking dinner. Shut up. Hey. Don't come and talk to me about fucking sucking dick. It's vile. It's disgusting. I don't want to hear that shit. Can I say something? I don't want to hear that shit. <laughs> and the difference between me and you is that you're glorified for it. And I am burned at the stake for everything that I've been through. So you've been through a lot. I've been through a lot. I'm seen as used goods. You're seen as a high value man. I guess the world's not fair, but that's the difference between the masculine and the feminine. Men are respected for going through things and surviving. And women Shame. are the complete opposite. They're shamed for going through things and surviving. If you look at women love scars on men for a reason. He's gone through something. He they're lived. war wounds. Yeah, they're war <laughs> men don't want a chick covered in scars. I'll say this right now, that a, a woman, the more trauma she goes through, the more masculine she naturally becomes. And if you were to give me my ideal woman, I would not want of, of wanted her to have a hard life and a bunch of trauma. I like the idea of her having a soft feminine life and being a soft person, and I can take care of her and protect her. Whereas as a man, to be a good man, you need to have been through a bunch of trauma because if you haven't been through trauma as a man, you're a weakling. You have to have been through a bunch of shit. So the mask and the feminine is a very interesting point there. I, my checkered past is all over Instagram. What would be your advice to people like me then? One of the main reasons that men are scared of a female with history is because it makes the man insecure. The women, the female paradigm in society convinces men, any man who says anything, you're insecure. Da -da. It's not insecure in that way. It's insecure in a very realistic, logical way. Like I was saying earlier, she's had a lot of life experience. Let's be honest. Am I the richest guy she's ever had? No. Am I the most famous guy she's ever had? No. Am I the best looking guy? she's ever had no like what's keeping her here and then part of it comes down to well am i second place if she could do better would she do better and that's where tiny things like i'm talking i know it sounds like dumb shit tiny things about favorite carver become more important than ever right it's your job as a woman regardless of how much history you've had or what guy you're with etc it's your job as a woman to make your man feel secure in the fact and make him feel like a man like auntie was saying make him feel like the man no matter what he does so that he feels like this kind of goes into the uh, another topic or the next topic that I was going to highlight or whatever mm -hmm. is that this is a, a warning that um, that goes for um, not just for men, but also for women. Um, but 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 specifically, this is in relation to toxic femininity that we want to tell men also if and also women, if you meet a person and the last five people they dated were all bad and you choose to date them, you may end up being the sixth person that was all bad and terrible. Hmm. And unfortunately, we do see that a lot with um, people that don't have accountability for their past. That can happen in both genders, but yeah. it is more common with the gossipy aspect, the social aspect with ladies, hmm. as far as like talking about how bad something Someone was previously. Else, yeah. Men generally have etiquette that we're already told off bat, I don't wanna hear about your ex from a lot of ladies. A lot of ladies can't handle that conversation of, I don't wanna hear anything about your ex or what happened and blah, 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 blah. So we, we tend not to mention it. And it's also our job to, um, when a relationship goes south, we don't have any choice but to either sink or swim. swim. Even as becoming a top tier guy, you can still lose the girl. Mm -hmm. And I want guys to understand that just because you become successful and you become this guy, it's not a guarantee because women are fleeting and emotional creatures, which means, 
they're they change their moods with you, you know they always say the phrase you know it's not your turn it's not she's not yours just your turn mm-hmm. i think if guys like really internalize that and accept it and understand i'm going to become the best guy for me and then a woman's a byproduct they'll be able to go through life a little bit better because a lot of times when guys you know do terrible things to them whether it's self-deletion or whatever it may be it typically comes from a girl because they didn't have the answers they didn't know why she left them or the breakup but when guys understand why things happened yeah they're able to accept it to a degree and then move on. But when they don't get that closure and know why, that's when the self-deletions happen, you know? Because human beings, especially men, if you think about it, there's always been this conquest for knowledge. Like every modern convenience that we have here was created by a man that was curious, that wanted to figure out, figure it out and create an invention. But when men don't figure it out, right? A lot of times it drives them mad. And mm-hmm. sometimes the end of the madness is a, a noose or a knife or a gun or whatever it may be. And we're on YouTube. I don't want to go too deep. But you know what I'm saying with the self-deletions. So sometimes being able to pick up my book or the rational mail or whatever, and you exp- we explain to them, this is how women makes like, this is how it really is. The Disney fairy tales are not real. Then they're like, oh, that's why she left me. They get that closure and they're able to move on with life versus ending their life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we have to just swim and power through whatever relationship we lost. To, to be able to have our dignity and show that, all right, I'm a fresh man and I, I, I'm worth something. We have to come in anew so that we can, we can't come in down and be like, oh, my relationship is so bad. Uh-huh. And, and so if you ask a man to be emotionally vulnerable and he comes with you with that, you don't know how to even respond to that. I find it very interesting that a woman sits here to me and says, no, men are allowed to sit around and do yeah, fuck all and feel no, sad. No, and no. those are the men they ignore no, when they DM. No, 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 no. Those no. are the men they ignore, they no. ignore them all. No. The man who works in Starbucks, who's sad all the time, you won't reply to him. Ne- neither will any other female. So for women to come along and pretend they give a f- about the fact that most men are basic, most men are basically invisible. There is not a female on the planet who's invisible today. You can be a four, overweight, fat, you'll still go to the club and get attention. 99% of the men go to the club and nobody even can talks to them. If they try and talk to a girl, they get blank and ignored and told to f- Most men are absolutely not really invisible. This is the truth about masculinity, right? It's very easy for women to sit here and complain about the top 2% of men. I met with that with this guy, he's arrogant, blah, 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 blah. Most men don't even f- exist. They send 10,000 DMs and never even get read, let alone replied to. So if you just sit here and say, I'll get a G, a big G, a boss, a millionaire, and let him have a day off, very nice of you. I'm sure you would. But it's be unattractive. So that, it's unattractive. So that's why, ladies, I'm sorry to tell you, when you ask for men to be emotionally vulnerable, it's a bad thing to say to a guy because men plus emotions equals either jail or something bad. You know, men, because we're physical, if we get emotional and then you got this big dude crying. And we want to punch a wall. That's the worst thing you want to sit and witness and observe. We're like big gorillas when we get upset. You don't want to see us emotional and physical at the same time. So it's better for us to be more in uh, what they, the emotional intelligence you ladies like to talk about. Emotional intelligence means we, uh, it means men are just in, in control of our emotions. We actually have stoicism. It's better for a man to be more stoic. He's aware of, oh, yeah, he's aware of, yeah, of how he, how, how He's in tune with how he feels and he knows how to control it. Yeah. He knows how to turn that knob uh, as well and be more directive and logical. You want a man that can be logical because it means he can give direction. Yeah. You don't want a man that's, he's just emotionally uh, vulnerable and he's just this big emoting, emoting creature. Maybe in the bedroom, I, maybe, I don't know. Maybe you, yeah, you might prefer it to be rough. Let's talk about <laughs> Fifty Shades of Grey, um, BDSM, even the video of Andrew Tate and that kink thing. There are ladies that like men to be physical. Ladies oh, like yeah. like a man that plows, you know what <laughs> I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? They don't want somebody to just, you're my, you well, know? Well, it's, it's, it's always the... It's, it's, good, always... it's good to have good intimacy, yeah. you know, where you're connected, but you don't want to see him crying after he, you know, fizz- after he finishes. Well, at the end of the day, like women have voices. He starts and- crying in your arms. This is so good. <laughs> Turn off. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Uh, I, mean, I don't think I've ever done that, but like. <laughs> you never shed tears I'm, after you busted a nut. That would be hella, hella random. I think, I think, Men don't do that. <laughs> I think at the end of the day, like, 
the idea sounds tantalizing. It sounds exciting. It sounds sweet. <laughs> it sounds sweet until you witness until it. Until you witness it. You'll see it, a think, big man crying I after. Think you'd be like, oh, this is a bit after of a turn off. Intimacy moment. You know, because yeah. at the end of the day, you 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 still want to be feminine. You still want to be cared for. You don't want yeah. to be playing the more masculine role. Yeah. And as know. as badly yeah. as society tells you that, um, and this might accidentally go into a topic where we're going to talk about. Yeah. Um society dictating that oh no like from you know pop culture movies saying like, yo mm-hmm. you can you can you can be this and you can be this and you can be strong and uh, you can do what what he can do at the end of the day i'm sorry i don't know i can literally you know point at any of my female friends be like all right fine you you're with your man there's a dude right there he wants to fight yeah. he's getting physical all right you go fight him yeah. I know for a fact every single one would be, no, I'm not going to fight him. I'm a lady. Now you're a lady. Now yeah. now you have roles you want to play. Yeah. Now you now you, you're you have <laughs> traditional gender roles you want to assimilate to once the violence kicks in. You know? You don't want to be on the front line with a, with an AK-47 at the war in Ukraine, you know? You know what I mean? So it's kind of like you can't just pick and choose. Well, today I want to be more feminine. Today I want to be more masculine. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, these roles... A, help us, and we all know deep down how we feel about them. Like yeah. what Mikel said, you, you're you not going to be there rocking your man every time he cries because you're like, fuck, well, I'm emotional too. Yeah. I need someone to, to be holding me. Yeah. And you're not going to go fight that dude for your man because yeah. you're like, well, A, he's going to rock my world. Yeah. I want to feel protected. Yeah. I want you yeah. to go yeah. protect me from you him. Want, you want a king to come in and go like, hey... I got this. Yeah. And you know if it's attractive. Yeah. You don't know why. It just is. Yeah. It just is what it is. And I know for a fact if that happened and we, we played it the way, you know, mm-hmm. some some women asked for. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go go get him. You got yeah. this. You're dumb. Yeah. You are, you're going to be dumb within a couple of days. Maybe yeah. even that day. In fact, she's watching you yeah. and she's getting turned off. She's getting turned off. <laughs> you're either hiding in a corner or you're getting beat up. So you don't want... You don't want a, a guy from uh, Friends. You don't want a character from the TV show Friends, this little soft, uh, pushy, pillowy guy that's emotional, and you know he can't be, he can't stand up to a situation. Enough. I was, I was just saying. Like, Could you speak up, please? Sorry. I, w- <laughs> I was just saying to my friend that I thought you were the most beautiful woman that I'd ever seen in, in my life, um, and then he said that you, you said you thought Daryl Hannah was the most uh, beautiful. <laughs> that he'd ever seen in his life. And I said, yeah, I liked her in Splash a lot, but not so much in, in Wall Street. I thought you had kind of hard, hard quality, quality uh, in that. And uh, while Daryl Hannah is beautiful in a conventional way, you are uh, luminous with a kind of a delicate grace. Then uh, that, that, that's when you started yelling. <laughs> Do we do this too much? I think so. Yeah, get off me. Yeah. yeah. You know, you don't want a bumbling, uh, ditzy dude. You just don't want a bumbling, ditzy guy. You want a, you want a man that's got you. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that's reliable. He's, he's your rock when you're wavy. Yeah. If you're emotional and you're wavy, he's solid. He's like, you know what? I'm here. I'm this pillar. I know you're you're crying right now, but I got you. Yeah. You need something reliable. That's why you want that relation. Yeah, that relation. The relation is security. It's security. And you want a man to be stable, secure. It's not even just from a financial standpoint, Point, but yeah. that's from a physical standpoint. And, and what, men, we still know that. So men haven't changed. We know what we're supposed to do uh, biologically, you know, what what our role is on earth. What's happening right now is with media, yeah, entertainment, culture. entertainment, pop culture. They're purporting to women to go out and be this alpha masculine Man, yeah. thing that happens. A lot of TV shows portray the feminine girl as weak and pathetic. And so I never wanted to be the feminine girl as a kid. Like I was obsessed with wrestling, you know, I've got brothers, so you know, I was always like that. But the girl that wears pink and she wears glitter, she's always like falling over and, 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 the, <laughs> yes. and the guys don't like her and she's really stupid and she's not cool, you know. The girl that's celebrated in the movies is the tomboy. They love her, the one that's playing football, she's one of the lads. And so naturally you start to become that. And then as well, you've got the likes of 
Cardi B, Nicki Minaj, The Stallion, all those people are just powering women to be disgusting, to twerk, sleep around, and these are the female leaders that we have. And the only reason why you will find men that will try to be emotional is because men are willing to assimilate to whatever it takes to sleep with you. <laughs> so you will find men that, it's the guys that send you text messages on your phone and going, good morning, beautiful. You, how are you doing, my queen? Men might do that initially, but no man naturally talks like that. They do Hell that no. to warm up to they're be they're behaving like you. What you would do. What is, you what you would what, what, what you think you'd like. What he what you know ideally what he would think you would like. Yeah. From a, an, an emotional point of view that he's being vulnerable. But yeah. masculine men don't do that on a day to day basis. They don't wake up. Hey, my beautiful queen. queen. And, and and any man that does that. It's fake. They're doing it to sleep with you so they can get some sort of access to you. The same the same you know? type of guys that be Because like... men are willing to do anything. So that's why you have men trying to be a little feminine and allow you to be masculine so he can have sex with you because his options are limited. But men whose options aren't limited are not going to accept that. It's hella weird. And also you have to remember when, when you are being the more masculine person in the relationship, yeah. it's just a default. You both can't be masculine. You're no. both going to butt heads. Yeah. So he will take on that either on purpose or subconsciously. Yeah. And that is happens to a lot of guys who subconsciously are taking on a lot more feminine, a, more, a, lot, a, a, a bigger feminine role not realizing, oh fuck! I didn't even realize I was. That's why, yeah. That's why you find it now yeah. with young people in society. You um, might find that with a lot of young teenage boys, boys yeah. that they're being very feminine and, and being effeminate, and they're only doing that to try to balance. You out. Feel, it has to be balanced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every you, everything in the universe balances out. Uh, There's always a juxtaposition. So if women try to if you're being more and more be masculine, more, be, try to be more masculine, he has to. He, be. he has to so that he can try to you know he can have an opportunity to. It have some enjoyment, and you and, but, you, and 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 you see it, which what yeah. the part that cuts the most is when you see this is, it doesn't, it, it takes a little while, but eventually she will, especially young women, usually bump into men who are more masculine. More masculine. And that's and they, who that's who she's attracted and to. And then they you find that at, they're more attractive. Look at Will Smith and Jada Pinkett. Look at Will Smith and Jada Pinkett. Selective outrage. Practices selective. Because everybody knows what the fuck happened. Everybody that really knows, knows I had nothing to do with that shit. I didn't have any entanglements. I did. I did not have any entanglement. And then for people that don't know what everybody knows, Wilson and his wife was f***ing her son's friend. Okay? Now... But for some reason, these put that shit on the internet. I have no idea why two talented people would do something that fucking slow down. What the fuck? If we all been cheated on. Everybody in here been cheated on. None of us have ever been interviewed by the person that cheated on. Prime example. Exactly. He's he's being the soft, like mushy guy. But the dude she wants to get smashed by, the guy she idolizes is Tupac. She's married and still talking about Tupac, Tupac because he's the alpha guy. Who does she cheat on him with? The guy with the tattoos all over his neck. And Who whatever. just like, couldn't give a fuck. Yeah, okay, yeah, so yeah, just yeah. he's a dog. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, but... But like the end of the day, that's what I mean. That yeah. She'll bump into a you're guy and watch, realize, oh, gonna, yeah. I, like, I like this. Yeah. Oh, he's a bit like ruggedy. He's a bit... Yeah. And, and and it sucks, but a lot of them go, uh, you are great. Yeah. But that's a friend. That is yeah. a girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that you're you've become a girlfriend to her. Yeah. yeah. And it's not hot. No. Yeah. No girls thought, damn, I can't wait to smash my girlfriend. No. Yeah. So you, you might you might end up in a relationship like that if you try to be this alpha masculine lady, but you will only tolerate it but for only for a bit, but, yeah. but so long you will need that masculine energy on the side. You're gonna see this guy at the gym that is dominating and you're going, Wow, I haven't had somebody that really takes you know, that was really rugged with me where he gave me a challenge. Because you would like the challenge if you're trying to be a masculine 100%. person or personality. And so that's truly what you're attracted to. So, and then calling it toxic masculinity, I think, is a very, it's just an easy way to. This get is how, rid this of it. this is how those cuckold relationships end up like. Ah, yeah. You know, those cuckold relationships where there's there's this there's this alpha chick, and she she's like, I want to have a a I bunch. Bring of, another man. I want to bring another man, and I want you to watch it. 
watch it and enjoy it is because she actually <laughs> she has no respect for you <laughs> at the end of the day because she's actually getting what she's truly attracted to. Yeah. You know, is, is that mass, you, you, well, you can't give it to she her. gets a big African bull, you know, or some masculine man yeah. to just bang you out. But you, you know? because she's not getting it from you, she has to get it from somewhere else. That's yeah. the issue. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, so, and, and, and that's the reality of what she really wants, wants. whether she doesn't even consciously know that herself. And, it, and it's the same for men. When a guy marries, a, we'll, just, we'll just say she's a, top five earner and i don't know in the in america yeah have you you always hear like oh he's cheating with the with the with the receptionist the receptionist is just some really feminine young woman yeah there's nothing sp like crazy special about her yeah. those are her traits yeah she doesn't have a doctorate yeah. a phd she doesn't rake in six hundred thousand dollars a year no she's just a very feminine girl yeah and then you look at the wife and you're like he's a bit of a dude yeah yeah you know and yeah, yeah. well not surprised you yeah. don't want to fuck one of the lads. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know? So, because I, I saw a talk, which I know some people get upset about this, and this, um, and it was actually a, a woman who said this. She was like, "Why do you think that you having your doctorate and your PhD is going to be the most attractive thing to some guy?" She's like, "Most of the men I speak to, I just like, yeah, she could work at Best Buys or Walmart, men, and I'd be, I'd be good as long yeah, as she's men, kind." Men and, don't care about those achievements and accolades that's all social engineering yeah life without children is vapious and it's inane and it's pointless and you may sit here and think that your career matters but the truth is that your job will fire you out of whim and don't give that's a right. second don't give a solitary that's shit so and when you're 52 and you're past it with no grandchildren in a house by yourself and all your friends have grandchildren this beautiful life you're sitting there by yourself do you think the fact that you can afford a few extra gucci bags is going to genuinely make you feel happy i was at my grandmother's 93rd birthday i looked there my grandmother had nine children. I stood there and I looked at my 93 year old grandmother and there was a room, a whole room full with maybe 70 people that came from that one woman. Isn't that remarkable? Yeah, that man. nobody cared about her career. Nobody asked what job she did. Nobody asked how many times she went to the club. You had 70 sentient beings, including myself, full of life from one woman who dedicated herself to being a mother and a good wife. That is beautiful. Because if you had your head buried in that career all of those years and you were given time to that career, you couldn't also be given time to a search for a man. And you know also that guys don't care about your career. So you're prioritizing something that guys don't prioritize in you. So you just have to be realistic about that. And I think oftentimes women will look at like, oh, what would I want in a woman, <laughs> you know? Because they're thinking, well, what would I want in a man? And they don't step back and say, well, it's not what I would want. It's what guys want. And guys don't want the same things that I want. So I may be thinking that, oh, my career is, is such a, you know, that's a top of, the, top of the heat, gold star. And a guy's like, yeah, I don't care what you do. This is something that the Matrix doesn't like you to talk about because in order to talk about this, you have to be willing to acknowledge the reality that men and women aren't the same and they can't have that. So my poster reads... Life begins when you understand living women matter more than potential babies. If it's a potential baby, what is inside of a woman? It's a fetus. Is it living? No. no. How can it grow if it's not living? Actually, actually, that's like saying if an acorn is a tree. When does the fetus become living? Um, that's actually a good question, but that line... Yeah, of course, because you don't know it, because it's oh, living. Oh. It's living. No, when is sustainability? Um... Uh, About, like, 30 weeks to born, like... How do you sustain life? Like, my newborns aren't sustainable. You can't just have a newborn and they just, like, live on their own, right? Right. Is, is a newborn not worthy of life? Uh, is a newborn not worthy? They, she said they, they could be bonuses, but she's like, at the end of the day, they're not the forefront of his, on his mind. Whereas, yeah. no. whereas for, for, for ladies, yes, that is the forefront of your mind. What, yeah. do you, what, do you, what are you driven? Are you driven? What are you doing? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you do not see these same women who are making that kind of money. They don't actually want to date down, as yeah. uh, Kels has said in previous posts. No, they don't want to find a dude who's making 20, 30, 40K a year. Yeah. They will always go for the man either making the same amount yeah. or more. Yeah. So men in general, men and women are different. That's why men have a different burden of performance yeah. than women. Whether that you want to like that reality or not, we are not the same. It sucks, but we, it, we're not. We're not the same. And people, the issue is that entertainment and pop culture are purporting to you guys 
that we are all the, the same, same and that you can be this and you can be that. And it's like, this is all a social experiment. This is all social engineering. Uh, men and women together in the workforce is a social experiment. It's all new. It's the last of the last 60 years. And they only did that for tax purposes so they can get women to be part of the population that pays taxes. So it's not because Double they taxes. actually like you as a woman and want you to make your own money and independence. They're doing it because it, you are now contributing to the, the, the economy. You were a whole section of the economy. 50%. Yeah, the... You, yeah, you were a, a whole section of the economy that wasn't paying taxes. Yeah. So I'm, I'm so sorry, but you need to understand that. And, that, and even for businesses yeah, as well. That's, yeah. that's more workers. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, and that, that started uh, because of the Rockefeller family. So you should do your history on that regarding women in the workforce in the Rockefeller family if you want to go Google that. Uh, I forgot the name of the first uh, Rockefeller, but it is in one of our videos that we did cover that topic on. It's one of our earlier YouTube clips, so feel free to check it out. Hmm. Um, but yeah, so that's the interesting thing with uh, what entertainment is doing. And so now you have podcasters, some of the female podcasters that are actually misadvising women hmm. and giving them terrible advice on how to go about and live their lives. And so these ladies are the true definition of what I would say is toxic femininity. Yeah. And so you have people like Drew Alofa. So we'll show you this clip here. I said, be in the room. Oh my God, you have to be in the room. You They'll DM be, you after. You have to be breathing and be next to them. That's it. That's the Not to expose all the athletes. Also, if you follow me and you're an athlete, I'm so sorry that I'm about to say this, but like, <laughs> you guys are so easy. Like, so <laughs> easy. They're so horny. They are. They're so horny. And they're like walking around being like, what can I put my dick inside right now? No, truly. They don't care who it is. They don't care. They don't, they don't care, care at all. Is. That's why I said like, they're honestly famous men, like men with lots of wealth and power are Easiest so much to easier to get than like the average bitch who works at Best Buy. Like I promise, like the, the dude who works at Best Buy, f him. If you want to date someone of power and wealth, you absolutely can. Easy. It doesn't matter what you look like. I promise, it doesn't matter. I was getting flown out when I was like a two, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Out. When I was when I when I was getting offered to get flown out and shit, I was twenty and I was in deep in my Anastasia Dipral phase, bitch. <laughs> Dip Ralph, and oh they God. still wanted me. So there you go. That's yeah, I'm dead there. at. Like I'm not even kidding. I <laughs> used to. The easiest ones are, yeah, at baseball, hockey for me. I mean, I don't know. And then I would DM like reality stars, and then <laughs> this one that is on a very popular franchise <laughs> flew me to Denver. And I spent a week with him, and he was on the show at the time. There you go. So, but I was, easy. like, in college. I was, like, 18 or 19. Okay. Yeah, so, me too, when it happened I, I mean, school. I can't. Is she not embarrassed? I mean, imagine having no sense of self-awareness that you don't even know how trashy you sound saying this. And by the way, you're trying to tell other girls, this is somehow a positive message for women. Oh, yeah, just get into a room with a bunch of athletes. They'll stick their D into anything. Yeah, they stuck it into anything. It's called you. It was you. Oh, they'll stick this into anything. You know what? You're encouraging women to pursue guys that are only looking for, you know, one night stands or a little bit of entertainment here and there. Those guys aren't going to take them seriously. You're going to be left with women who are broken. That's nasty. That's nasty. In my friend group, I'm the only polyamorous person and I have the least sex. It takes practice to have those difficult conversations. This has been a journey for you, Miss Willow. How did you make this decision? With polyamory, I feel like the main foundation is the freedom to be able to create a relationship style that works for you. you. And <laughs> Haram. <laughs> All right. okay. So it turns out Lana Rhodes is a porn star and she's sitting here lecturing on what trophy wife training looks like with her two other friends. So all in all, a trophy wife is a high value woman in our eyes. She works on bettering herself every single day, whether it's physically, mentally, educating herself. She dresses for herself, not for other people. And she just loves herself and puts all her energy and effort into building herself. She talks about what trophy wife training looks like from the perspective of hypergamy. She completely butchers what hypergamy is. They also talk throughout this cast about this term bad bitch. It's a real bad bitch. She don't need Mad bitch. <laughs> men don't care about being around women that have bad attitudes. They don't want to be around, you know, miserable women that think that they're bad bitches. Why are they not showing, you know, women how to make a sandwich? It's just them talking about her past in porn, her giant notch camp, which she suspects guys should look away from. It's pretty gross if I'm being honest. I want to say also in general, this sounds like the worst podcast ever. 
I, I just don't understand people that think leaning into this victim mentality is something that people want to hear, especially nowadays. It's just, it's, it's just old. It's just aged. Nobody wants to hear how oppressed you are as a princess. It just doesn't make any sense. Any guy who goes after a girl significantly younger than them is severely lacking in their life. And I, I mean that confidence wise, I mean, like they are falling short in so many places that that is the only place they can turn to, to feel like they have, they have something on the scale of power. And it's, I mean, ultimately it's predatory. I mean, there's just no way to kind of, because you're manipulating someone who ju is not aware of what they're giving you yeah. and it's unfair. Being in the army is worse than being on OnlyFans. Wow. You're selling your body to the government. What? Shut up. Sh sh shut up. No, no, listen. Hey, this, hey, TikTok. This isn't bullying. This is a legitimate question. How many dicks did Mia Khalifa have to take before her brain stopped working so good? Eh? You know, Mia, I'm pretty sure I remember when you said that you wish you didn't do porn before because, you know, it affected your future. And now here you are on OnlyFans just making a shit ton more money doing the same exact thing you were doing in porn. So which one is it? Okay. You sound like the Sergeant Major's daughter. You act like one because you've been run through by the entire battalion. And now you're here talking about shit that you have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. You sound like every anti-military person that knows nothing about the military. You dislike us. And so therefore you go, oh, you're selling your body in government. Just sell your cornhole to another 80 fucking dudes surprised when a girl does that that's what built you up mm. that's what did it for you that's what put you on the map to sit there and now go oh it's bad oh i wish i never did that it's kind of hypocritical you know, the reason why you're in the place to make such an absurd amount of money off only every month is basically because these companies did advertising for you and yeah maybe you didn't make too much money off of them but in right. a lot of ways if i was one of those companies that shot with you early on i'd be thinking like a more accurate way to look at this would be to say that we probably deserve a percentage of yeah. the money that you're making now <laughs> i always think it's kind of kind of when they do that you know um because it's like i got what i want out of it now them yeah khalifa all respect in the world yeah. but realistically your fans ain't bringing in that much money if you didn't right. become the chick for totally. a period of time right totally Men are the easiest thing in the entire world. If you are wondering how you and another woman got the same man, it is because men are the easiest thing in the entire world. I have never wanted a man and not gotten him. Do you have any idea how many men have wanted me and not gotten me? Granted, granted, some dusties have caught me slipping, but... There has never been a single man that I have wanted that I have not gotten because men A few moments later All right, so yeah, that's an example of the, These are ladies and she's got a massive platform yeah. where she's talking about men in a very derogatory nasty manner and yet she still can do this with impunity yeah, no one no one checks her no. checks her on making physical making fun of phys people's physical Phys physical phys traits physical features, and physical yeah. features you can't help that i'm sorry yeah there's, um, there's a lot of things you can't help i mean and she's making fun of dudes that are taking care of their physical features oh even guys yeah they're, who are ripped they're, they're for their own they're, physique they're making fun because at the end of the day she's just making fun of anyone who stands up to her. Yeah. Nose ring at your fossil age? Okay. <laughs> also, you look like the main baby from Coco Melon. <laughs> oh, bye. <laughs> look, I drew a beard too. <laughs> bye. Yeah, I'll run you my fax number, you aging bitch. <laughs> also, the hair. I hate being right. <laughs> Little boy haircut, old man hairline. And also, you look like the mascot from big boy restaurants. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Men like you should stay in their motherfucking lane. <laughs> Do you know what? I'd be a fucking hater too if I look like the boss baby all grown up. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hope you had fun. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Men come on this fucking app, watch videos from this fucking crypt keeper, and think he's gonna teach me how to get bitches. 
for sure he is. That guy knows exactly what he's talking about. <laughs> But I mean, if you want to listen to someone whose birth year ends in BC, by all means, bitch. And last, but certainly not least, you look like Professor Calamitous from Jimmy Neutron. Ah, <laughs> uh, bye. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> same hairline, same height. And just in case you haven't caught on yet, when you were describing a confrontational woman that makes you feel this small, at me next time, bitch. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Dot. If I had to see it, so do y'all. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. What the fuck, bro? Did I throw up in my mouth like just the teeniest bit? Maybe. That was a Russian doll. A fucking terrible dog. Oh my god. First off, obesity is tolerated. I'm sorry, I haven't seen an Andrew Tate video where he's berating a woman for her physical features. features. I and haven't seen she, that. She's technically, she's taking the, specific people. Is that, is that? Andrew Tate's not know? like, well, Kimberly, uh, username 698, yeah. or you're, you're ugly and you're fat and you're this. In fact, he's even spoken out about men being unattractive and not being, but no one, no one cares about if if I talk about men not being up to standard, yeah, go king, go you're you're the man. Yeah. Tell yeah for the people in the back, yes queen, yeah men of this, yeah, yeah they see, should up their standard. Men men don't lie to each other. We don't give each other false bravado and go like you're oh, the best. You're the best, and we're all tens because we say we're tens. Now, socially, women will do that to each other in a group, but they're all lying to each other. They know where each oh, they know, they yeah, know they know where, who, where each girl stands. Yeah, hundred percent. They 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 know their actual uh, realistically where they stand value wise each other, and it doesn't come out normally until they're in a conflict. That's when they're yeah. Honest. That's when they're, they're honest, honest about honest each other, with yeah. each other. Like yeah. oh, that bitch is a slut. Or they'll be and, like, well, uh, you're a fat blah, 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 yeah, blah, 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 who has no blah, blah, that, blah. That's what women tell the truth. But for the most part, women are communal thinkers. And so they all lie to each other because they don't want to offend and upset each other. This is another thing like the big loud mouth girls, sort of like the Drew Alofa chick. The, whoever's the most alpha in the girl group when the girls go out, girls will still follow this chick. Whoever's the loudest and the most dominant of the group, even if that girl's direction is stupid, even if she's single and all she does is get drunk and have one night stands, all the girls in that group will follow her out the nightclub to the next nightclub. So you're being guided by a completely oh. lost idiot at like, the end of the And day. if you met an amazing guy and she's like, yeah, we're leaving, they'll just follow. Yeah. And you will ditch that amazing guy because... Alpha girl one alpha girl, said, alpha girl, said so. Alpha girl didn't want you to get laid. She she wants you to stay to single. single. She wants you to be in the same, same feel, for, feels as her. As her. Whereas like guys, if you're like bro, there's a bat, uh, you better yeah, you better yeah. you better go men get are, to it. Men are very supportive with each other, so it's like yo, if Ben to meet somebody very attractive, I'm like bro, you know I yeah, I'm like go go for that's, it. That's you for the, that's you for the night. Yeah. That's you uh, for the night. Hey, I'm staying. You keep <laughs> you keep getting bro. I'm, you handle that. And we we tell him you handle that. And I you know? I will be like, listen, I might have to go, but bro, do your manly, you, you do your masculine thing. duty. Yeah. Be a gentleman. I'm not gonna make you leave because I want to you know, leave. Uh, nurture her, you know, sl slay, slay, you're nurture. Not, you're not attached to the hip. Yeah, exactly. We're not attached to the hip. We we're able to be independent thinkers. We're able to. I'm able to let him. You know, lead his 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 direction. He has his own thoughts. I'm able to respect his autonomy as a man, mm. of of what he likes and what he's interested in. Uh, you know, if, if we we might even have uh, different you know tastes or variants in what we're attracted to with ladies. Who knows? Yeah. You know, but I respect my bro. That line, like, yo, do your thing, man. Like, bro, I, th that is good for you. If he's happy, I'm happy for him. Yeah. But unfortunately, the communal li uh, hive mind of a lot of ladies is that if one girl is happy. And there's a bunch of single girls around her. They will misadvise her to her detriment because they don't want to see her actually be able to enjoy herself if they're all going home and crying themselves to sleep. I have seen so many instances where a woman, she'll have a fight with her boyfriend. She's got these bad girlfriends, bad influence. She goes to them looking for advice and she gets more and more heated with each second that passes, goes back into that situation. I have seen so many relationships crumble 
because women have low quality friends that they seek advice from that then give them bad advice, ramp them up. But also most of the time those friends are in either marriages they hate or they're single and they want company. So they're like, oh, let me wreck her situation as opposed to giving good advice to say, listen, go back to the table, try to work it out. He's doing this, you know, maybe that wasn't so great, but this, this, and this are like, you know, you've got a kid, you've got just bad advice all around. What I've come to realize from talking to both men and women is that single women perpetually keep each other single. They give each other terrible advice. What I've always said is that typically, you know, women are hive-minded creatures. They follow the flow of what their friends say. If you have a one girl in the group that's like, hey, you know, she's a little bit more dominant than others, they're going to follow her lead. So even if she has a terrible lead, maybe she's chronically single, she's <laughs> extremely masculine, she's not attractive, maybe she's overweight, whatever. All the girls are going to look at her and be like, you know what? Maybe it is a good idea to be sure, a raging right. bitch. Maybe I'll get some guys. I've watched Kim Kardashian get a um, high value man. Mainly follow her in her footsteps. <laughs> and unfortunately, women like to follow. And I always say that, you know, men are leaders, women follow. And if girls aren't with a strong leader, they're going to follow someone who's the strongest in her orbit. And if that person is an idiot, they're going to follow that person typically. Yeah, you always see it when, I don't know, a lot of guys can probably agree with this. Yeah. It'll be a girl and they'll be like, we're leaving. And the girl's like having the best convo with this guy yeah. and she will leave. And, they'll, and, they're, and it's they'll under come the, and cock block it like this. And it was under the guise of it's safe. She needs to get home safe. Safe, yeah. It's, 20, her it's, it's 2023. Order an Uber right outside the club. Jump into the Uber. Go home. Yeah. You don't literally need to both be in the same Uber to go home. Because I know for the fact that same girl whose bank being like, we're going, yeah. would leave your ass. Yeah, we'll leave you. <laughs> yeah. To go enjoy herself. Enjoy yeah, her time. Exactly. And it, as these people get older in general, too... Is that these girls always they end up in their own relationships as well too? So they will bail on you once they find something yeah, yeah. that they yeah, like. Yeah. So to lead your life direction based on your girl circle out at a nightclub is ridiculous. ridiculous. It's freaking ridiculous. It's like just know that you deserve to be happy and enjoy yourself and don't be led, ladies. Don't be led by somebody who doesn't have an example you should be wanting to replicate and emulate if anything if you want to be successful in life you find somebody who is married yeah who's living a life that you actually want to replicate that you can live by and go wow that's a great example of of what they have this is the type of direction i need to you know uh, uh ideally model after you know there's not a lot of women out there who um are gonna, like that, but we're like that, or even going to be truthful to give you the right direction. Girls will steer you in the wrong direction. This is why it's so dangerous to be uh, about uh, buying into a philosophy, and that's also what the podcast chicks like this mm-hmm. Drew Alofa and other female podcasters that will just be bragging about one night stands. Damn, yeah. They'll be bragging about you don't need a man. And they're still single, and they're in their forties, and then you and their thirties, and they're projecting their their negative experiences, their lack of retention, but like because they don't have accountability, they're projecting that on you, and now you and saying they're living their best life. Yeah, say they're living their best life, but they they're actually unfulfilled. Living your best life is technically is having a family. It's having children at the end of the day. This is why girls go and get dogs. You go and get a dog, or cats, or a cat. Because you're trying to emulate your your innate nature Design, to yeah. nurture. You have a nature to nurture. And so you're trying to fulfill that void yeah. by walking around with a, with a pit bull <laughs> and just going like, oh, this is my baby. <laughs> it's a jackal. It's a dog. <laughs> and you're tongue kissing it. All right, like, I've, I've met in my life, I, I've lived in so many different countries. Gross. And to this day, I've just never experienced like, anything Hannah, like Hannah, Hannah, Karen, get your mouth off the dog. Like, oh. I've never, yeah, I've never experienced so many um, women I've met who are single, and they all treat their pets the same way, like it's Almost, a, like, like a it's child, an infant. like yeah. it's a child. And at first, when I first experienced it, I just thought, I, I, just, I just, I just thought people like pets. But as I got older, I realized we're in this um, generation it's a, it's a where biological thing, <laughs> a generation where it's not like. Uh, the 90s or the early 2000s or even later than that yeah. women weren't just going out and buying i bet you if we looked at a statistical analysis of yeah. how many women buy pets yeah. you'd probably see a big spike yeah now what's the difference between now and then you can't be like well women have the right to vote so then they can buy dogs they could probably buy dogs then but yeah. you're looking at such young women and i'm i've i'm saying the women i've, I've met overseas yeah. here in new zealand and a few yeah. places yeah they are all treating their dogs like they're babies yeah 
Or and and then if you took away their dogs, and this really sucks. I know someone who overseas who did this lose li- their dog. This li- bro, bro I crumble. Can- her life is crumbled. Yeah, they oh they're ready to commit suicide. Yeah. My dog died. And, and, I'm, and I'm like, like I'm not like, trying to be a dick. Yeah, I'm like a child will live longer than you. A dog has yeah. literally got a certain amount of years. I don't yeah. know how that perplexes your mind. Yeah. And how you didn't see this coming. And of course you're treating it like a baby. Of course you're mentally like ruined after that. Yeah. And like Kel said. You're using this to literally fill a void, and a lot and a lot of them won't understand this. It's subconscious. They're going, oh no, it's just like it's why, why, why did you just suddenly buy a pet dog and it's your baby, and you call it your baby? Words are very important. Very You're not going, important. oh, it's my pet. Um, yeah. uh, uh, I don't know Ferrari. I uh, know yeah. it's like, oh my god, I can't wait to see my baby again. Oh my god, I'm taking, I'm taking my boy out today. Yeah. Uh, that is literally how women who have children talk. And to me, women who actually have kids, it's a slap in the face because you're trying to tell me what you're, you're doing, you're dealing with the same thing. Yeah. And I nearly had a girl literally say this. She went, oh yeah, I, and she had a pause because she, she saw my face. She was like, yeah, it's pretty hard, like. Um, my life is real hard with, uh, uh, you know, said baby, her, her pet dog. And I went, and she baby. said, oh, no, no, no. I'm not trying to say, like, baby. it's the same, but, like, it's pretty hard. And I said, uh, it's not really because women who have children can't leave their children at home by themselves. Yeah. You you literally can leave an animal. Like, you, you do realize before, humans, yeah. they were alone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they used to feed themselves. They and feed hunt. themselves. So all you need is a shit cage. And you need to, you and just some food need, and a bowl. And you're good. But yeah. um, the other thing I've noticed with a lot of, uh, I'd say, young women who are buying dogs and treating them like babies is these dogs become codependent. Yeah. So I've noticed a lot of them buy sitters because these dogs freak out. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, a, learnt, it's a new learnt thing a lot of dogs are learning is, I can't be left alone. Like, yeah. holy shit. It's like, yeah, my dog just scratches the door. He, he can't be left yeah, you're with him twenty four seven. You've made you've made him into this very codependent thing. And what? see, that's that's the other. This isn't another thing about single moms too uh, that they do to their babies. Is a lot of single moms make these children very codependent on them, and this is why babies get very emotional as well. They start crying and having temper tantrum temper tantrum, 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 tantrum issues mm. um, because if. There's not a, a balance in the home where there's a father figure there to teach the your your child. Men are supposed to teach your child that like, hey, it doesn't matter what happens to you. You need to you got to power through it. You got to be strong, mm. get through it. You know, um, if a boy drops on the ground and he scratches his leg, he goes, "You'll be fine." I saw you bump your head when you were two. <laughs> You'll be all good. You just just brush it off. Yeah. You know. It's all right. It's just a little sand. Just a little sand on your cut. Yeah. That's what we're supposed to do is provide that psychological reinforcement so you can go to keep going. But unfortunately, ladies tend to be emotional. So if a child gets hurt, they get very emotional too. And so the child is crying and they start crying. And, oh, come here, my snook and bookums. And so you will helicopter parent He's this, like kid this kid to, to a detriment. And then when he gets older or she gets older, they're so hypersensitive to everything that they can't take any sort of criticism. Mm. They can't take any sort of self-improvement things. They can't handle being on their own, you know, to be able to be able to feel like they can make their own decisions. Mm. In a, in a, in well, a, this is kind of like where all that toxic masculinity kind of vibe yeah. is coming from. Is, yeah. Oh, well, I don't want to deal with it. So it's a uh, toxic masculinity. Yeah. And part, part of society has been telling single mothers for decades now, you're strong, you're independent, you don't need no man until they need child support or until they need government handouts. They still have the opportunity to raise children, but without the authority of a man in a household. And the problem with that is that single mommy households tend to be absolute beta factories. They don't churn out strong, virtuous men, and they generally churn out promiscuous, slutty women. The vast majority of uh, gang activity, single parent household, the vast majority of teenage pregnancies, the vast majority of suicide attempts two parent households with a man and a woman produce far more useful members of society than ones that are walking around virtuously pounding their chest saying i am awesome here's my offspring the vast majority of the guys that watch my content come from single parent households they haven't got it right and they've been conditioned to be kind humble nice these moms generally turn out weak men that try to enter the friend zone to get with the gals and women don't want weak pussified men they want strong virtuous guys that's what they've always been attracted to men compete women choose Husband and wife raise their kid. The chance of this kid going to jail is the same as just the father raising his kids. The problem is 
the single mother without a father in the picture that can sit there and discipline the kids, give them hope, values, principles, all the other stuff. We play different roles. This is statistic. If somebody's watching and saying, oh my God, you're discounting women, you're discounting mothers, go get upset at the stats, not at me. This is stats. You can't get upset at three times three is nine. That's stats. I'm giving you stats that's being given to us by the government because they have access to these stats. This is disturbing. Partial that is uh, sometimes it's it's psychological angst that they uh, there's there's a lot of single moms that project their bad experiences onto their children. A, a fuck ton. Excuse my language, but there's a fuck ton of single moms mm. that will project their bad experience onto their their child and they will talk bad about the father. So you prepare uh, either the the boy up. Um, the, the boys and girls are raised different. So you'll prepare the girl up, for example. You prepare her up, and she'll be more um, having more angst towards men, and she'll anticipate negativity because of her mom's mm. experience. So then she goes around, she relates all of her her relationship interactions with other men, and the same like likeness that of her mom experience. Her mom projected her her own choices onto her child mm. which is it's going to affect her child's um thought process as an adult it, it will manifest itself in her adulthood and you can actually f up your child's life you know because your child can make a bunch of mad, bad mistakes based on your own actions that you you did you chose and you put this philosophy in their head and then they don't figure this out until they're 35 that oh my god i've screwed up the earlier years of my life, or 40, or 50, I screwed through the earlier years of my life because my mom projected her single mom experience onto me. And same with boys. Boys end up being overly nurtured, and because boys want to prove themselves to ladies um, a, a lot of times, they end up becoming more effeminate, and they don't know their masculine role as a man when it comes to adulthood, mm -hmm. what they're supposed to do, that they're not supposed to be emotionally vulnerable, and um, Disney boys and giving out flowers, they're supposed to take care of themselves because if that boy doesn't take care of himself, no one's gonna save him because they're gonna view him as a man. So that is that clear difference with men and women. Women always have someone, society saves women. Everything in the Western world, infrastructure-wise, through family court, through uh, social programs, through employment, yeah, you, you, you're, you are complete uh, diversity. You are completely saved off the identity of your gender because you're a female. Openly admit that we lied to a generation of women just to sell you products. We created this fantasy world, the Cosmo Girl, at least in the beginning, before a lot of women began to buy into it. The Cosmo Girl was just a sexual fantasy. She could would work hard. She was on the pill, and she would get an abortion. They weren't going to have to fire her for being pregnant because she was never going to get pregnant. Uh, she just worked hard, and uh, for the corporation, basically, she was a man. A lot of you might not know how how influential Cosmopolitan magazine and all of their all of their media was, completely setting a new standard for what it meant to be a woman in America. And it's not even what it means to be a woman in America. It's what it means to be a subpar man in a woman's body. <laughs> because so women are being oppressed. Women are being taught to be selfish you're not being oppressed in in western society yeah. you have it way better than men the brunt of repercussions if things go wrong always falls on the man and you can look at that and even i we were talking about chris brown earlier and his unfortunate situation uh with yeah. what yeah. happened with uh, him a long time ago rihanna. with him and rihanna now he didn't become physical without reason and on, on top of that he was a he was a young young guy he was like 17 he was 17 and that, that that might be something we'll cover in another story yeah, yeah. for another time but just in general i'm just trying to say is um chris obviously had a reason why he was defensive they had a very volatile relationship with a very jealous young lady there were two kids trying to play adults with him and rihanna and rihanna was very prone to jealousy without understanding that he was also young and he was handsome he doesn't know how to manage, you know, people being attracted to him and how to cope with that in a relationship. And on, on top of that, having access to excess, you have so much money. How do you live in a sense of normality where you can try to stay grounded? 
and you know he didn't have a father figure there he had a mom there he, he had a, apparently a bad experience with whatever did experience he did initially have with the father figure there but he didn't have anyone to keep him grounded to give him direction of what his role is and not to go with his emotions mm. he led with his emotions and he turned physical yeah you know so um, that's why it's important to not misadvise men and tell men to be vulnerable and be emotional. No, allow that man to be stoic and also emotionally intelligent to know how to control his emotions. Yeah. So it's okay to say emotional intelligence and also even to be specific when you say emotional intelligence. Say your ability to recognize your emotions and control it mm. so that you can give guidance. That's good advice for a type of man that you might want to look for. So feel free to put that in your dating bio. That's free game from me and Benda. Yeah. Giving you some some tips, you know what I'm saying, from the men. Yeah, you know, I like, like that. I not, like that. Not intimacy tips, you know, but no one's <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. I'm being joking. Laugh, okay? <laughs> but anyhow, that that's honest. That's that's what we're, we're trying to give. So, yeah, that's an example from Chris Brown and Rihanna about why emotions are bad for men. Yeah, yeah. Um, another thing that we can um, cover as well as too, which uh, we've already talk, touched on, is just ladies being using the their, the gym and that j TikTok trend that went you yeah. know global which yeah. is part and partial why me and ben did this episode yeah. i guess it, like touching back on that is it's just important you understand that um like kel said you have you have your femininity yeah. you you got to understand that it comes at a detriment if you're if you're abusing it yeah. and yeah. you're going to have a lot more men in this generation in the coming generations yeah. less willing to go out of their way to become the kind of guys you want because everyone's so scared of repercussions of being shamed you're gonna shame someone yeah you're, you're gonna shame the in guy in front of yeah. what millions of people for uh view, views i guess because again yeah. attention's what you like yeah for and, for chivalry things that we we're supposed to be doing and the yeah. the lady who was caught cool, one of them a real famous one she i think she's a twitch streamer as well yeah she apologized she had she apologized because everyone watched her videos yeah. and they noticed he didn't do anything yeah um so yeah he, and then one chick was an, an only fans girl Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. So she was purporting that he was harassing her with attention. But yet when people found her on social media, they saw her Instagram handle had a link link tree to her OnlyFans account. So it's like, oh, his attention would have been OK if he paid for it yeah. for five ninety nine, five ninety nine, whatever the hell you your know? price point. So is. it's like you, this is where it goes back to abusing your femininity, toxic femininity. That, yeah. That, like the whole thing we've been talking about, that is toxic femininity. Yeah. And, You're and, using and, your femininity yeah. to gain something and using it when it best suits when it or best, pleases you. Yeah. When it best suits you. And, and also because ladies have gotten so much attention off Instagram and social media, that abuse of femininity has even gone down to putting pre pressure on men regarding their salaries and how much money a guy should make. You know, and ben, uh, yeah, we were, uh, yeah, the, we were we were talking about that. We were talking about, about a, yeah. a video of a um, they just he he uh, he kindly asked There's, women how if a man was making a million what's the, dollars, what's the average salary? You know, that, um, well, yeah, or what's the average salary that you would think is 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 sufficient for a man? Yeah, and there's ladies now that are like being like, oh, he should make uh two hundred fifty k, um, but I also want a wedding ring that's... yeah. There was one that was a wedding ring, and they they gave them the budget, which he's making a million a year, and each of them was saying in the in the six figures minimum. Well, some said 150, some said 280. One lady said half a million dollars, and if you guys don't know maths, I, I'm not great with math, yeah. but that is half his salary in a year. If he's making a million dollars in your year. wedding you, ring, you want a five hundred thousand dollar ring. wedding ring, so you want him to work for half a year. Just to buy you a ring? To buy you a ring. Like, uh, and then also, if, if half his money is going to that way, that should be going to your home, your kids. Well, all so many important things, but a ring is very important. Yeah, it's, and, it, it's like what you pointed out in another episode. Bender was just like, he was just like, what what kind of pearl, you know, how, uh, yeah. what kind, you know, what kind of pearl of a vagina do you have that he needs to do all of this? That, you must have like magical, magical. You think you have something magical? You, you should, for yeah. that, it should be magical. Yeah. And then what the, the you, you my, got, my opposite, opposite of an STI, <laughs> you have to have some sort of magical clap, clap, not the STI, the clap, but something magical. 100%. Down there. And, but the, my favorite part of the video was when he went and asked men the same questions. Men. And the men said, a few of them said, um, yeah, like 5K, 6K. That's, that's not even a chip in to the million dollars. That does, yeah. That's not a big amount. Yeah. But, so, so but what, most what, of them what, said 
So was this the five k about how much they would spend on the ring? Yeah, they said they no they 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 asked men if the opposite like how what would you like, and they just said a majority of them said oh she if she's just kind yeah. <laughs> the same shit they're like oh if she's just kind and like I really like her um, yeah you shouldn't really uh, matter. so this is in relation to salaries. No, nah, this was the relation uh, relation to to ma- uh, the wedding rings. They just asked the, oh, okay, o- the okay. opposite gender just so, to see so they, what so, their so answers they, would so be. So they asked them how much would yeah how much how much spend would, would they would, would they she require need for the uh, wedding band or for something? wedding band wedding okay. in general and they mo- the same replies were for most oh, so, men. So, were. so wedding in general or? yeah wedding oh. wedding in general and I think it was wedding rings. They were pretty much being yeah. like hey million Cause, dollars. Cause a wedding ring, I'd be like, hello, I I don't I. Yeah, you wouldn't care. Most yeah, of the replies see, are the same. we wouldn't care. We'd be like, man, just give me a. They're like, hey, give me a hundred dollar gold ring. I want it's fine. A it's thousand. Whatever. If you're making a million dollars, a thousand dollars shined every year. It's, yeah. it's cool. It wasn't know? a big deal for them. Yeah. A majority of them were, and then they men, did. Exp- men are not picky. We're they just, did say to the, some of these men and told the answers that some of these ladies had given. Ooh, the same women on campus off. as well. Turn off. And some of them laughed because they were like, wait, what? They were they one guy. He, oh, I hope they weren't actively dating these women. No, 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 no. They were just in the same. That campus. was a social experience. It was a social, was a social experience. experience. So they were just. Like, that would be wild if that was like their girlfriends or something. Uh, like, nah, like, dude, like, no. These these someone's it, relationships it, it obviously, are gonna fall apart. That it obviously couldn't be because these men are in, they they're going through. They were engineers. Some of them were doing doctorates or whatever. So they obviously can't make that money. So these women aren't obviously looking for these men who are probably nice guys. Yeah. Great guys. I don't know. Yeah. But these men, some of them laughed because they were like, oh, uh, that's that's a very big amount. Yeah. And you like, you sure? Half mil? 250K? Yeah. Whoa, damn. Yeah. So, but a lot of their answers were just, can she be nice? Can can she just be kind? <laughs> yeah. Just kind? Kind. Just bare basics, you know? So that, if that, you. That goes back to our Valentine's Day episode. If you check our Valentine's Day episode, mm. there's a section in it um, that goes into asking are men picky? Like we we asked like midway through the video, are men are, are we choosy? Are, are, are we, we picky, are we are picky, picky people? And we so we answer that question in our video. So check that out up here. Link in the uh, uh, on the screen. Screen y'all. I was gonna say description. Link in the screen. In the bio. Exactly. In the bio. Just watch here. Yeah. But anyhow. But yeah. But yeah. like uh, yeah. And, and for me and in, in full, that's how I see a lot of toxic femininity. Yeah. So ladies, be careful with who you listen to for advice. Honestly. Your advice can, it, who a philosophy you buy into can honestly fuck up your life. I mean, it can fuck up ten years of your life, fifteen years of your life if you listen and you subscribe or prescribe like a prescription to the wrong advice. It yeah. can really be a detriment to your life. And there's a lot of women who don't have examples that you can be emulating, giving you direction and advice and, and ways of things that you should follow. So you want to follow people that have um, good examples to them. You know, even even men, you know, um, this is the reason why people followed Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate has a, philo- uh, he, he has the uh, assets to back up a direction of life to want to go in as far as like understanding the burden of performance men have when it comes to physicality, building a business, building, uh, taking care of your health, wealth. Um, you know, so these are key components that he, he highlights. And yeah, people are saying sometimes his del- mis- message delivery, delivery yeah. was was harsh, but men need that. And yeah. he says it on different video clips. He said, the reason why I'm so sharp and so harsh is because men need it. The other aspect of it is, it is a bit of um, performatism with, with some of the things he does. Uh, Andrew Tate, to his defense, he's from um, uh, Luton. It's a section of the UK where men talk about the big booty cuties and they talk about being a real G or a top G. And that's part of the slang that is Luton. Luton is is a lower income area in the UK. And essentially, he's doing his own parody of Ali G. I don't know if you've seen Ali G. I'll put Ali G here because yeah, yeah, yeah. Ali G is a funny dude. Yeah, a funny so, what's your opinion on abortion rights or women's reproductive Yo, rights? Yo, I was totally into abortion. I have been responsible for at least five. So, you know, I was well up for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, essentially, essentially Andrew Tate is doing a parody of, um, of, of Ali G and that's what it takes to be a, a online personality and inter- entertaining for people to tune in and view. That's why we're talking about him. That's how he cracked the YouTube ag- algorithm and people have been upset with Andrew Tate just because he was able to do something a lot of people haven't been able to do 
He did something in less than a year yeah. that a lot of people have been trying to do in 12, 12 years. 15, and build, yeah. Which is build their notoriety and YouTube momentum. Yeah. Like us as YouTube creators, like um, we're okay with and with understanding that obviously at the start, um, we aren't afraid to suck i wouldn't even say fail because we we are we're doing it we're making yeah, we're, we're, we're making, making yeah. we're making the content but we aren't afraid to necessarily uh fail or or not be the hottest thing yeah, yeah. because that's part of the the brunt of performance of of trying is that it takes time and we're cool with that yeah. and that that's what being a man is as we embrace well it's like any aspect challenge. Of, of business yeah yeah you, every every man knows you literally if any any well-known business fortune 500 whatever you want to call it yeah. knows that at one point you're gonna fail yeah yeah that's yeah. that is literally the makeup of a successful business person and it makes the journey worthwhile if you don't you fail then and you really appreciate it when you get to where you're going, going you know yeah you know? but um and money doesn't change people it just kind of amplifies who they already were yeah. you know if they're a giving person or whatever the case would be but what i'm trying to say is with andrew tate which he is a giving person he has a he has a dog shelter that's in romania He's donated to multiple charities throughout Romania and the Romanian uh, Catholic uh, Orthodox Church. And, uh, you know, he converted to Islam just because he didn't like some of the direction the Western world is going into. And a lot of masculine men have an issue with that, you know, because it's just they're just fracturing society in different ways. And people are seeing the value in traditionalism, even some of the women that they're saying that might not like hijabs, which... I covered it in the story of Iran. There's a lot of Iranian women that love that traditionalism and they're okay with it, but it's not what Western society is purporting mm. that, you know, they actually want, but people in a woman in Iran actually don't mind their head coverings and stuff. They just don't want to be abused by police. Police abuse is something that's like global and almost every country you can find police abuse, but that's their biggest issue is just the abuse with police. So, um, but, but what I'm saying is Andrew Tate, is giving men value and he's being hard and stern on it with reason and he's doing it because it's the delivery that men need it may not be for you but men need that like oh i, I need a father figure especially for a lot of men in the western world who do not have father figures mm. the amount of women we see on dating apps that are single moms is shocking it's not, it's and not. that will tell you how prominent of an issue it is that there are going to be a lot of boys that are going to be raised and be very emotional and try to cater towards their mom, you know, which in turn will make them have a warped sense of what they're supposed to do in reality where they want to cater towards a lady when they have to take care of themselves yeah. for the lady to want them. Yeah. You don't want any man that's not taking care of himself and he's trying to buy everything for you and you're like, honey, you don't have your business going. You don't have any savings. What are you doing? Yeah. You know, so... That, that's why Andrew Tate exists. And what he's doing hasn't been toxic masculinity. He's just been trying to provide guidance and um, a, a way for men to manage themselves so that they can be chosen by you. And also for them to reshare standards and be a leader while they're in a relationship with you. And maybe even help correct some philosophies you might have had wrong to tell you like about what there our duty is as men on this earth is and why it's a detriment to us why we suffer if the relationship goes south and why we have different duties that make us come together have bring life you know onto this earth that's why we're here we were born from a mom and dad and how we how we work together and the beauty of us working together so um yeah so men have to be he has to be harsh on men and we have to be hard on our values so that we, you know, we get the right partner as well, too. And yeah. So anyhow, so just be careful out there with whatever philosophy you buy into because it can fuck up your life. I've known several girls that have been following certain podcasters on YouTube and they're single, independent and unhappy. And they're modeling their life after women that have had failed marriages and failed relationships. And they don't have a life that's worth emulating. That's only going to lead to you with a dog and a vibrator. Nice. You are worth more than a dog and a vibrator, okay? <laughs> a, 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 jack, a pit bull for you to make out with and a, a buzzy toy, okay? Just get you some a real magic mic. Get you a real man's <laughs> man. You know, get you that 50 shades of gray. Whatever it is that you like, find what those men are interested in and seek that out. And understand in order for him to want that relationship that you're asking for with no time wasters, you have to show what you uh, what you can bring to the table and what you can provide. Mm. You know, so 
anyhow, we love you guys. Yeah. That's our message. For you guys today. have a lovely day. Exactly. Be <laughs> safe out there. Keep appreciating each other, both genders. And know that, you know, there's beauty in, in us being on this planet. And so that's what we're here to teach. That's right. All right. Goodbye, Dudes Captain. Ruined. We're out. <laughs> Yo. Peace. And we're... Rock it, rock it. Mm. I am so fucking high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I could turn back.